All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, today we're going to do a quick video taking a look at some change-ups that we are going to make to our hot coverages, all right? So some ideas that uh, I've got from watching some NFL film and, and watching some teams do it. Actually, Brian Flores, uh, watching when he was uh, the head coach with the Dolphins, coordinator with the Patriots, uh, some of the stuff that they had done and some of the stuff that was kind of successful for them, and then kind of taking it and morphing it into our own ideas for what are, you know, might fit us in high school football, all right? Make sure you check out some of our partners. Game Strat, sideline replay system we use here at the high school. I'm currently at Bishop Kenny and also at, at the previous jobs that I've had. Uh, highly reliable, highly affordable. We love it. We, we have great customer service, so check out Game Strat. All right, Dome Hats, a headwear sponsor for uh, Bishop Kenny High School, my previous high schools, play fast football. Here's a fit, fitted Bishop Kenny hat. Crusaders on the back, all right? So you can customize your own hat. They got an online hat builder. Every hat has a story. You get to create your story because you build your own hat. Baker Sports, which is a local sporting goods company that we get all of our spirit packs, our players gear, coaches gear. Uh, we have online team stores for all of our different sports where parents can get gear from Baker Sporting Goods. Make sure you check them out. Just Play, which is the playbook app that we use. Uh, we do our game plans in them. We do our playbooks in them. We make presentations for the kids. That, in our meetings, we use the, the presentation mode. If I was going to speak at clinics, I would use Just Play uh, in my presentation mode to um, give my speeches or my talks at clinics because it's not only a powerful play diagramming tool, but the, pre the presentation mode makes it look very professional, easy to do. You can add video. All right, so I 100% all right, recommend Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Thousands of reps. You don't need a partner. We have them in our weight room. You can set up. If you built two by fours or put things cemented into the ground, you could have them out on the field. You could have them in the weight room. It's perfect for in season. Off season, you work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, different tensions inside the coils of the pad itself. So as you shock it back in order to leverage it in, as kids get stronger, you can change the tension to make it harder to leverage in. First get to your place and they're younger, you can put them on the easiest setting. So it comes with different coils and tensions to change as the kids develop. Thousands of reps don't need a partner, work on striking in season, off season. I definitely recommend Difference USA. And then Coach Tools, which is a new player grading system. If you're tired of grading players the old fashioned way, by hand, charting everything, this is a new software system that allows you to set up each one of your, uh, you know, the, the labels that you would use or the columns that you would use. You'd be able to set those up your own way. Once you get them set up, you still have to watch the game and, and, and input the information just like you would in any other software system that you're using. But once you've got it set up, it makes it a lot easier and then it makes it more presentable, more professional when you do deliver it to your kids and say, hey, I graded you out of this. Here's the columns, here's the labels, here's the grades in each one, here's what your total grade is. So if you're tired of doing things the old fashioned way or maybe you want a more professional way to look at it, make sure you check out Coach Tools. So we are gonna look, up changing, uh, look at changing up how we play our hot pressures. So for us, in general, when we were sending six and playing what hot coverage, the first I first learned about it from Michigan State playing it. Uh, that's the first time I picked it up and was fortunate enough to have a coach from Michigan State come in and recruit one of my players, and I got a chance to talk to him. So I talked to him about the vision and break, the idea behind it, what you're trying to do, how you're trying to do it. So for us, it's almost always a deal where we're trying to cancel C to C gap so that all runs that are inside we feel like we have gapped out. Now it doesn't mean that's, that's how you have to run them, it just means for us that's how I feel most comfortable. So if we were running one of ours, we might bring the nose one side, leave the fore eye, bring up an edge. We could go with America's path on that side and now we're gapped out from A to C gap as long as everybody understands where they need to be as the offensive line moves, the blocking scheme moves, how do we get it gapped out. That gives us a little bit of movement. It gives us a path that we already run. We just add an extra blitzer onto the backside. So we already run the path. It's America's blitz. It's long sticked. You could do it however you want. If you didn't feel comfortable with that, you could leave the four eye and just plug the mic. Bottom line is you're sending six and it's all gapped out. And then with two hot players that we generally give landmarks to, we generally tell those guys, hey, you're eight yards off the ball, two yards inside the hash mark, don't care what the formation is. And when we first teach it to our guys, they're like, well, coach, there's a slot there. That's number two. How am I going to play him? And we got to teach him, all right, look, you're playing hot. Quarterback to throw to two has to stand up and look and rip the ball to two. When he punch, rip, looks, melt, hand comes off, drive, and you have to convince them and rep it out to teach them that they can get there. 
And then what we play is we play hot third. Sometimes we'll press bail, sometimes we'll play it from off. But when we play the hot third, we're telling the corners and the middle safety, you're slow pedaling out, reading through the quick game, now screens, things like that, so that if the quarterback sees six-man pressure and he's going to punch one, raise up, we want to be transitioning to where the ball's going. We don't want to be playing true deep thirds. So we're banking on the fact that we're sending six. Most quarterbacks, when they see six-man pressure, a lot of times, unless it's a play action, seven-man protection design to hit shots down the field, most of the time when quarterbacks see multiple linebackers blitzing, there's going to be some type of progression in their mind to get the ball out somewhere, whether it's a hot throw, inside breaking hot route, outside breaking hot route, stand-ups, nows, or hitches, or outcuts, whatever it may be within your system, when they see that many guys coming in pressure, especially if you had to look, like a lot of times, if you mug the look up, so if you mug the look up and you had everybody walked up in their gaps where they're going, a lot of times when the quarterbacks see that, the clock in there, the internal clock in their head starts going off to say, hey, max blitz, this ball's got to come out. So we've always gotten away with playing vision and break players, on landmarks, hot third techniques. But where we get hurt a little bit is we either have to peel our edge blitzers on the push or the, or the fast release of three because we get short on numbers. So anytime, like speed option for us was always a little bit of an issue. So if we got speed option and let's just say the team decided to gap it out and they gapped it down and we got speed option, and this blitzer treated that as a peel, because you got to remember now, the way we're playing it, they've got leverage to block and leverage to block. The middle safety's a hot third player, so he's going to slow pedal out. When he sees speed option, he's going to run the alley, but he's going to be doing it from a lot later, since he's also the middle third player. So if we peeled out, the quarterback has a lane to run the ball, and he's got to run it back inside, so we should have leverage on that. But with the ball on, on hash marks, right now I've got it drawn up in the middle of the field. If the ball's on a hash mark, the space in high school is a lot wider. Right, so if they fast motioned the back and threw them the flare, if we don't peel with that, we, we get in a little bit of an issue there. So the idea behind hot pressures is always, look, guys aren't open until the quarterback sees them and throws them the ball. So we've got hurt on stand-ups and some nows and some, you know, some, some push screens deals like that in passing down situations. Three by one always became an issue for me and I've asked around to a lot of different people. So if you play the landmark deal and you don't really change their landmarks and you get three by one, we would always take our, our middle third hot player and line him up directly over three so that if he read through the quarterback and the ball came out uh, and the ball came out quick, we could get an extra player there. A lot of the times we left our landmarks on with our, our vision and break players because that's how we taught the coverage. And we taught them no matter what the set is or the formation is, those are your landmarks, that's where you play. We've tried to bump a safety out and drop a safety down and make it almost into a, uh, a, a pushed version of two under. We've looked at bumping the backside vision and break player. So the backside vision and break player bumps towards the trips. And now the corner has to play that almost near man and we would have to peel a back out if the back went out weak. So we've looked at it a bunch of different ways, but I've always struggled with hot pressures versus three by one. And there's some guys that I ask and they just say, hey, look, we line up the same way. If they stand up and throw it, we got to rally and we got to run. And we've tried that and we've tried some different things. We've tried to push the backside hot player over. We've tried to play the front side corner more aggressive. We tried to play the middle safety a little bit lower and more aggressive off three. So we've tried it all. And we've had some success at times doing it. But my issue is we're, we're constantly looking at sets that, that maybe we don't like the pressure to. We've also choiced it to where our choices were any two by sets were going to be six man hots and any three by ones were going to be three under three deep. So we would give our, our middle safety the two choices to say, hey, we're going to choice blitz this week. These two blitzes are paired together. Any two by sets, you can make the hot call. Any three by ones, you make the three under three deep call, whatever your blitzes are, are called. So three by ones get into three under three deep, so you always have an extra number there. Two bys, we're okay. We'll peel the back if we need to, and we'll be all right with our landmarks in two by one, two by two. So we had some issues with, with deals like that. The other issues we would run into would be like 
you know, if you're if you're trying to do it into 12 and 21 personnel sets, so let's just say for argument's sake you're playing a team and they want to come out in tight end sniffer twins away. And you want to set up your pressure deal however you're doing it. So let's say it's that, 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 that. So you've got your corner who's going to play a hot third there. You've got your landmark vision and break guy. You've got your landmark vision and break guy. You've got the corner there. And then you've got your middle third player who's playing his hot third. So now the issue becomes, all right, so if we're going to send this from the edge and we're going to stick that, send that, 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 and that, if they are running counter plays away, so if, if they're going to go and they're going to run counter, and let's say they're, they're good enough to understand that the, that the movement's coming, so the center goes back on the long stick, so the center blocks back on the long stick, the tackle knows that he's got to hinge the B-gap blitzer there, and then on the back side, all right, if they're pulling, let's just say it's front side, down, down, guard, kick, Sniff a rat. Okay, so when you start getting that scheme, are our two hot players going to be good enough that when they see that type of action, if we're reading through the quarterback and we get that mesh, are we good enough that we can fold him and fold him and gain them in the run game? Because the first thing we got to worry about is also, so if teams do this and they're running anything to the tight end wing, anything like stretch, he's got to be in a position to set an edge if they get the sand block. If the sand is up the field and the ball comes back under, we've got to be in a position to add our hot players. And that's why everybody, the reason you would play the coverage this way in general was you were basically creating eight-man fronts with movement. You were aggressively sending six, but the back two hot players were always vision and break guys that weren't chasing people around man-to-man. -man. You weren't playing zero. You were vision and break off of landmarks. And like I said, when it originally got taught to us, it was taught that way, and that's the way they were doing it back in the day or when it first started. They saying, hey, we put these guys on landmarks. This is where we play them. I've watched clips of Clemson running and those two guys. Now, obviously at that level, who's hot and where they're coming from is, is a, a greater variance at the, at the higher level because they're spinning to it and they're dropping guys and they're rotating a million different ways to get to their hots. But at the end of the day, I've watched the Michigan State Hots, I've watched the Clemson Hots, I've watched everybody do it. At the end of the day, it's still two vision and break players that are trying to be your extra folding guys for runs where they show up. And then usually you would try and gap it out and make all the runs go out to where the vision and break players are so that they don't have to fold as far inside. Well, we, we live in a high school world where we're going to get these types of personnel groupings with counter and other things. And one thing you would probably say that we try to stay out of is if that's the personnel grouping, then maybe hot pressures aren't good. And I agree with that. So maybe you just don't call. But what if you're undersized, you're smaller than another team, and your back's against the wall, and your base defense doesn't hold up, and you've got to come up with some answers, and you want to pressure and move a little bit. So could we be able to pressure and move and do those things and gain some extra guys where we may need to gain extra players? And where the thought came from, is watching some of the older last year, the year before, watching Miami with a lot of their heavy pressure looks, and you can watch them do it. They did it to, to Lamar Jackson 33 times in one game, almost the same pressure look. And they're showing like these house blitzes where they've got seven, eight dudes at the line of scrimmage. They're popping out, so they would have looks like, you know, whatever the, whatever the, the, personnel grouping was, let's just say for argument's sake, it was some personnel grouping like that. And they had, you know, these looks where they had, if you had your, your mic and your will up in here and you had a three technique and a three technique, and then you had a Sam and let's just say an extra backer here, corner, and then you had a safety over that, you had a safety over that, you had a corner over that, and then you had an add-on guy from the side of the back, and so let's just say for us, for argument's sake, it's the middle safety. So they're showing looks like this with, with house pressures, and what they're doing is they're popping out off the turn of the slide, so if we're sending him there, and let's just say for argument's sake, we're sending him there, whichever way the center slides to, so if the center slid away from the back, 
for argument's sake, and, and they turn the protection where this way. Well, when the center slides to the mic, the mic pops. So when the center slides to the mic, the mic pops, and they have multiple looks where they pop two players. So now you're still getting this here. If this has got to go in there, all right, they've got to figure out how they're going to full slide it. And then you're still trying to go there and then off the edge. If the back inserts, I keep coming. If the back releases, I peel. So the, the, they would present, and the NFL guys present, all these different mugged up looks and all these different pressure paths. And I wasn't really, for our game in high school, it wasn't so much that I was enamored with this, even though they absolutely pounded the Ravens that year into submission and ran that blitz 30 times. It wasn't so much getting the free runners and the free hitters to the quarterback within those blitz paths. The thing that I started noticing was how they played these guys on the back end. So what they were basically doing was they were basically getting into looks where they covered up all the eligibles and they presented zero pressure looks. So they presented man pressure zero looks. But every one of these players on the back end all played with their eyes on the QB. So they all played slower in a pedal, eyes on the QB, and anything that raised up and looked to get the ball out they were all transitioning to the ball. And there's even a clip in there in the Ravens game where Mark Andrews is lined up somewhere and they run you know, something quicker out here, whatever the route was, it was something out here, and Mark Andrews rips down the seam. And this safety right here sees Lamar Jackson basically punch one, turn and look wide with a sidearm underhand release going to the outside route. This safety transitions to that route and lets Mark Andrews run right by him. And when you're looking at it on film, you're looking at this and going, oh, if they see that, we're in a ton of trouble. He's running right by us. But because this player was allowed to play with his eyes in there and he knows that they're presenting seven-man pressure looks, he knows the ball's coming out. So he's playing vision and break with eyes on the QB. He can break on any in-breaking routes from Andrews or even any out-breaking routes but he's not staring at Andrews playing in a zero technique or a zero concept. He's actually breaking off the intent of the cue and then they're sorting these routes almost like a banjo technique when they happen. Because in the NFL, it's always going to be where they're hot. So that's why the pop out drop, you know, they'll, they'll pop out two guys sometimes. So they'll, they'll use two DBs and if they slide this way, they'll end up with a pop out there and a pop out there. So in the NFL, they're always looking for what's your hot answers. Are you going to throw lookies inside or outside breaking hots? Where are you going to throw hots to? So their answers up front are a little bit more elaborate than ours would probably be in high school. But the bottom line was I started to get enamored with how the back end guys were playing that technique, which looked like zero, but they were all playing it off the quarterback. And in high school, let's take it a step further. Most quarterbacks in high school, when they go somewhere with the ball, they all look where they're going with the ball. There's not a ton of high school guys that look here, reset, and look back to the other side. And if you're sending six, I don't know if they can reset. So the issue, coverage-wise to me, would be if we get more than a punch one from the quarterback. So if we get a three-step that continues to drop, well, now out of our slow pedal, now my eyes may have to transition to where we banjo. So if we're getting routes down the field, you know, how are we going to handle this if it was, you know, something where it was slant wheel? Well, to me, the way that the and again, this is not sitting in clinics, not talking to anybody. This is just watching it myself. They were vision and break eyes on a cue, and anything that wasn't now one, they then transferred it into almost a banjo technique where they sorted the routes out on the fly, still knowing that they're heavy pressuring, that ball's going to get out pretty soon. So what it allowed them to do was there was a there was a look, there was a trips look in one of them. Right? So in one of those sets, there was like a trips look to where they had a trips look out here, and it might even have been almost punched. So what happened was, instead of the normal hot landmarks, they had a corner and a safety and a safety, and they were basically over one, over two, over three, over the backside one, and they were lined up over all the eligibles. So even if you took 
one of the guys out of the pressure book and lined him up over the other eligible. So they've got all five players lined up over all five eligibles with everybody playing with their eyes to the queue. And they got, you know, some type of route which was, you know, let's say it was starting to go as some type of, you know, snag or double snag to flat. The bottom line is they've got, even if it was meshed, they, had, they got into some type of deal where they tried to get three to the flat, thinking that it was going to be zero, thinking that they could set it up and mesh it or pick it, and thinking that they could get three to the flat. Well, what ended up happening was the corner was the one that ended up transitioning down on the flat route, almost as, almost as if these three were playing a banjo technique on those three. So my question would be, well, how can we banjo those three receivers if our eyes are on the quarterback? So I rewound it, I watched it again, I watched it again, and sure enough, there's multiple clips where they're trying to run man-beater concepts, and the three players that are playing hot are distributing the routes out while the ball comes out of the quarterback's hands. So they're all still breaking on the attention, because the cue has to look somewhere to throw the ball. So for us, Instead of our landmarks, if we lined it up and we said, all right, look, I want you to play. So if we change the rules, and instead of landmarks and, and, and eight by two off the hash, if we change the rules and we made the rules for argument's sake, all right, so let's just say we're going to get tight end to your wing backside, and we're going to get some type of pistol look. So whatever, even if you were a even if you were a four two five team, so let's just say you were four two five team and you were gonna run the good old fashioned inside crossfire, main, marlin, whatever people call it, all right, and you had let's say we changed the rules and we said the corner, you are a hot of one player, your safety is a hot of two player, your middle player is a hot of three player. Your other safety is a hot of two player, and your corner is a hot of one player. So we're going to line up almost directly over all the eligible receivers, and we're going to match them as if we're playing zero coverage, but we're going to change their technique to be hot off the QB. So now we've got all the eligibles covered. So we are presenting a zero look. So even if we were to go And send six crossfire, old fashioned four two five, hot pressure looks. Instead of landmarks, hot thirds, deep middle third, what if we played over all the eligibles and said, hey, hot one, hot two, hot three? So now if they took that guy and they lined up in a near set like a trips wing, okay, I'm hot of two. So I'm in position to make it look like I'm playing zero coverage because I'm hot of two. I'm hot of three, so I'm in position to play over three. I'm hot of two, two is now the back. So I'm hot of two off the back. If we line up this way, can we fit all the runs that we're gonna see? Can those guys that are vision and break players, if we are getting runs, show up in the run game? Because originally, again, remember the premise of the hot stuff was a lot of teams felt like when they were three under three D, that inside dropper based off the game plans that they were seeing wasn't really doing a lot for them. So they got to a point where, and when Michigan State described it to me, they got to a point where they said, look, why don't we rush this guy? He doesn't do for anything for us anyways. We're not gaining a lot from him. Based on the game plans, these are where the throw's going. What if we added a six guy in, and then we played this hot principle? We played two under three deep, vision and break. That's where it came from. And then the vision and break player, they have eyes on what's going on in the backfield, so if they're getting meshes, and they're slow to go because of RPOs and everything else, but if they're getting meshes, and it turns into a run, I can eventually add myself because I'm not looking out here at a guy playing man. So if you said six and played zero, most of us in high school would tell us, hey, make sure you're looking at your man because here's the other fascinating thing about this. The number one thing that we almost always have to break on the back end in high school is kids that want to look in at the ball. So you're playing zone match coverages, you're playing palms, and I got to read off the release of two, but I want to look in there. All right, or, or guys that are always looking in too early at the ball. They throw the ball to a receiver. 
So when you break, you need to break on a receiver and then find the ball. You don't break and look at the ball because they're not throwing the ball to you. So that was something that we always looked at and said, look, our guys always want to look in the backfield. Well, what if we play this coverage and we tell them, go ahead and look. When we play this deal, you're allowed to look where you always want to look. Now, not in our pattern match deals, but in this deal, you can look where you want to look. And now any formation they come out in, we should be okay if they were to go trips closed and they put three over here. And we tell our guys, all right, listen, just you're the hot off player. So if you're hot one, you're hot two, middle safety, you're hot three. Well, back here, hot of one is the corner. That's the tight end. Hot of two is the back. So now we've got five guys lined up over all their eligible receivers playing hot of principles. And vision and break with eyes on the quarterback. So any stand-up screens that, that show out here. So anything that works its way, stand up or tunnel. And now the, the, the tunnel screens and those things, that's where the pop-out guys really help. But let's just say this was stand-up. Now to him. He pushes out. He pushes out. Well, in man deals, when they see those guys go out, they relate to that. By the time they realize that their guys are blocking somebody else, you've got to work on all the exchanges and trying to play. Well, if you were vision and break and the ball went out there, all three of them would transition to the ball. Now, they only broke because the ball came out of the quarterback's hand. So you're going to say, well, coach, what about slip screens and all that other stuff? Well, if the ball doesn't come out of his hand, we don't break. We're melting. So we're looking at the cue, and we're melting in a direction, but the ball doesn't come out of his hand. If it doesn't come out of his hand, then he's still dropping. Now we've got to transition into a pedal and, and sort routes out. That's the only question I have is if he drops back and the ball doesn't come out of his hands, can we now sort all the different routes out in a banjo in and out theory? That would be my biggest question. But it now solves all the issues for us. We've got all the eligibles covered. We're playing off the cue, so if he throws stand-ups, we're all going to break on the ball out of his hand. We've got a guy playing over the back, so if we get any inside meshes and we're canceling out every gap and he's extra, he's hot off of that anyways. And then the hot guys can also find their way into the run game because they're all looking back here. So it's a safer way for us to line up and send six without playing zero. It's a safer way for us to call those pressures versus multiple formations. Empty, whatever you want it to be. Hot one, hot two, hot three. Now we're lined up over every eligible receiver. We got our eyes in the backfield. We're playing vision and break. All right, uh, those deals off the quarterback, off the mesh. Is it that easy? No. Is it something that takes work? Yes. But to me, I think it's a better way to play than the old-fashioned landmark deals, deep thirds. And again, my deal is always the innovation of it. So I'm always watching things and seeing where the game's going. I think Brian Flores took things to another level, presenting zero looks, but he's not really playing zero coverage. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope if you're a hot pressure team, maybe you can tell me how you play it. I'm always interested to hear how other people play it. It's not something we major in. It's something we run. It's something we run when we feel like it's advantageous for us. But we carry it, and we carry it with landmarks, and we carry it with hot thirds, and now we're going to make the change, and we're going to carry it a new way. We're going to present zero looks, and we're going to play hot of, and we're going to work on all the things that we think beat it, and we're going to work that out to our players because I think as a defense coordinator, that's a better look for us than the landmark simple looks, and then three-by-one is an issue, peeling guys is an issue. So we are going to make the change. We are going to play it this way, and we're going to hope for the best that it works out for us. So appreciate all you guys uh, that follow Play Fast. Uh, make sure you click the subscribe button so you are a subscriber to all the videos that come out. Turn the notifications on. You know every time we do a video or I go on YouTube Live. Uh, leave a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You like it, you don't. I know what content you want, how to present the, com the content. Any comments you leave, questions I'll try and answer, videos you want me to do I'll try and answer. If, that's, if you don't like that idea and you leave a comment, I'm never going to say you're wrong. It's football. You don't have to agree. That's my opinion. It's something I want to look at, something I want to go to. All right? It's not for everybody. I get it, but... You leave a comment, I'm never going to be negative about that comment. I appreciate your opinion. I thank you for watching the video. So thanks for everything you do for Play Fast. Late in the season, hope everybody's season is going well. We're sitting at 7-1 right now, big district championship game on Friday night at home in our stadium against one of the best programs around. So we're excited. Uh, playoffs are looking good for us right now, so the season's going to get extended. If you are done with your season or you're not in the playoffs, uh, the offseason is, is a great time where we start looking at other things, what we want to do, changes we want to make. So as soon as the offseason ramps up, there will be all kinds of things going on. Already trying to figure out how we can get the next Play Fast Clinic rolling. So a lot of ideas, a lot of things going on. I want to do podcasts. I want to do 
uh, some other ideas and, and interview people. So, again, thanks for everything you do for me. Thanks for everything you do for Play Fast Football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.